So, um, yes, going to the next session. Um, this is a regular uh, session we have at every Susanna meeting to inform uh, what the regional chapters have been doing. Um, and this time we have uh, additional in-country events that, uh, uh, that took place due to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation grant under the BMGF SEI cooperation system. Um, yeah, or should I just call this session Girl Power because we have five lovely charismatic women presenting and I feel like, thank God I'm not male. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the first uh, would be uh, Lara Nasser from um, Jordan, who is the regional coordinator of the MENA chapter. And uh, Lara has uh, been working as an environmental scientist for 10 years in the water and sanitation sector and she has experiences in several international organizations like IUCN, uh, UNDP, and GEF. So, Lara, the stage is yours. Is this on? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, I know that many of you are actually really sleepy and you really want to go home. <laughs> So I'm going to try and make this as interesting as possible. Um, to start off with, I don't think there's a need uh, to tell you about why Susanna chose to do something uh, in the region. To start off with, um, the chapter was previously called the MENA chapter, which was the Middle East and North Africa chapter. But we have then decided to call it the West Asia and North Africa chapter. Uh, many of you might ask me why. Uh, we can have a nice discussion uh, during the coffee break later. But long story short, the newest terminology with UN and UN Water is Western Asia and Northern Africa region. And we'd like to follow the new trend, which is less Eurocentric and actually uh, covers the actual geographical correspondence of the region. Um, to start off with, if you look at this really nice map of all the members of Susanna, uh, I don't think it needs a smart person to let you know that there's a huge gap in our region. Um, there, therefore, um, our team was created, Manal and I are working together for Susanna. Um, and keep in mind that we are hosted at Burda, the West Asia and Central Asia um, uh, w um, regional office. Uh, Manal is a researcher who's actually working with me uh, and on Susanna and is also working with Burda at the same time. Um, I think the major issue about the actual need of creating Susanna in the region is the ideology that organizations in our region tend to compete to do something. And I think this is one of the major issues we'd like to fight. We'd like to make sure that everybody is working together rather than having to fight for a grant and or compete for a grant. Everybody should be working together for a common goal. And I think that's why we are trying to what this is what we're trying to do, at least in, in the region. Um, Following the new way of thinking of Susanna and making sure that we are increasing south to south coordination and cooperation, um, this uh, cooperation system was created. And what we plan to do is the following. So, to start off with, we'd like to think about the members who've already started off in the region. Uh, we'd like to make sure that we increase Susanna exposure regionally and engage with old members that have been loyal, at least to Susanna, for a very long time. Um, when we talk about knowledge, we want to make sure that Susanna it not only shares experience and knowledge, but also creates knowledge from the region for the region. And one of the major issues we're trying to tackle is basically trying to research SDG 6 baselines in different countries, uh, which will basically help um, in the actual goal of increasing sustainable sanitation and the actual goal of achieving SDG 6. Um, we also want to make sure that we do communicate uh, knowledge created by members and other members with different uh, partners around the region and globally. 
another thing is that we also want to make sure that we increase the usage of the online platform. Um, in our region, online platforms are not really uh, likely used. Um, uh, people uh, would tend to, we're actually more of a social, <laughs> cultural people. So we'd like to see each other more often than actually speak to each other on Skype or actually hold the phone and call you rather than actually writing an email. So um, using that to our advantage, I think, we want to make sure that Susanna in the region uses both, both face-to-face uh, -face and as, at the same time, make sure that we do follow the trend of online communication. Uh, and make sure that we adapt it to our regional needs because sometimes, and I think Manal and I have realized that most of the issues are not being used on the online platform because it's not really adapted to our region. And this is something that we have to probably work on. Uh, one of them is making sure that we use more of the Arabic language, uh, which basically helps everyone communicate. Um, last but not least, after a lot of policy research in the region and for the region, it has been basically concluded that there must be, we must create a platform for dialogue. We have to create a policy science and society platform that makes sure that decisions are made on a scientific and evidence-based um, value. And I think this is something we're gonna try and create. Um, one of the basic, basic issues we're going to be doing is that we're going to try and create a policy science society platform by bringing people together and making sure that the, that the issue of sanitation is easily communicated between everybody. And I can tell you more about this tomorrow if you do join us. So it's a little teaser. <laughs> um, you can join us in our regional meeting tomorrow. Uh, we're having it at um, SEI. Um, and I can tell you more about it in a bit. Um, so, just a little bit about what's going on right now for the region in Susana. So, we currently have 41 members, um, partner organizations, um, and most of these uh, partner organizations are out from outside the region, but they work in the region. So, this is something that we have to make sure to change. Uh, we all know that a lot of people in the region are working in the region, but nobody knows about it. And I think we have to communicate it in a better way. Um, the online platform, we have 31 projects, but we all know that there's a lot more. And part of our vision is to make sure that we help donors, organizations and NGOs do not overlap other projects that are going on and everybody knows exactly what they need to do and where the gaps are. And I think part of that is being able to communicate what type of projects we have in the region right now. Uh, we have 173 publications, which are sadly mostly in English for the region, but this is something we all have to change together. Um, Manal and I have been scouting and uh, basically trying to upload as much information uh, we can, but this is something we have to be working with other partners in the region to make sure that most of the know-how comes from the region for the region rather than outside the region. Um, last but not least, let me tell you about the meeting tomorrow. So basically the meeting is going to be at 11.30 at the Stockholm Environmental Institute. So please join us. Um, long story short, it's going to be for two hours. We're going to be able, it's going to be a round table. So it's not going to be a presentation. I'd really like most of you to be there so that we can dis openly discuss what you think the chapter should look like. Make sure we don't miss anything and maybe basically get your opinions on how things you imagine things can be. And more so, we can uh, basically share with you our actual plan of how we would like to create a platform um, and basically see what you think about it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lara. And now make sure to be very friendly to these ladies, else you <laughs> won't get any of the delicious Jordanian sweets. Yes. <laughs> ah, yes, I have some sweets for you. <laughs> Um, so we, we can take one quick question if anybody is interested. Yeah. Uh, Kitch, yeah. Uh, thank you, Lara, for the updates. Um, the, the 
Mawana. Wana, right? Yes. Uh, the, what we used to know as MENA. We, at the Africa Sun uh, process is moving forward to cover the entire continent after the NGO commitments. Uh, if you recall, during the Tequini, we, we were restricted mostly to Sub-Saharan Africa. The, the thing is, it's been very difficult to get into North Africa. Um, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, and uh, more, yeah, yeah, Mauritania is, is already, was already participating in the Itiquini process on the West Africa. So how can we work together? We, we are working with UNICEF, MENA region, Omar Hussein is in, in Jordan. Uh, we are trying to reach out to folks in Sudan, uh, language-wise, I mean, um, Arabic, to see if, how can um, the Susanna chapter, um, how can we all work together to enter, uh, to really take uh, North Africa along in Africa? Uh, the problem is, uh, I wanted to just ask how many government people are here? So I think this is, yeah, so, so we cannot even, um, we cannot even map government within all these people. It's insignificant. And I think we need to, to do, uh, to go in, uh, act aggressively into a membership drive into government people so that they join Susanna. And I think that, that will really help us to, to, to all go, go together. Thanks. Yeah, you can, you can continue. Um, okay. Um, can everybody hear me? No? Uh, Is it on? Hello? Oh. Um, okay, so one of the major issues uh, that we have been thinking about is how we can increase membership. But I think Manal and I, and when we did go and speak to everyone, I think one of the major issues that we need to make sure of is that people realize the benefit of joining such a network. Um, and that the benefit is not only online, because when we do tell them to join the network, they only think that it's an online network and that, why should I join it? I can just, it's an open library, it's free, and it's just not really interesting. And I think we need to find a way to make sure that things like this are actually proof to them that this, things like this is, are beneficial to them. And I think this is a challenge that we all have to work together for. But I think uh, part of that is making sure that everybody understands that the biggest um, reward is the people you meet inside this network. So I think, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> Um, I think we can talk more about it in a, in yeah. a bit. Um, the other questions can be addressed at a later stage. Uh, so from, thank you, Lara. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we done? Later. Mm -hmm. After, afterwards. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so from uh, Wana, we're flying to India, and I would like to introduce my colleague from the Secretariat, uh, Francisca Folk. Uh, we share a chaotic workspace <laughs> every day. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, Francisca has been supporting the Susanna Secretariat now for a couple of months. And uh, before that, uh, she was uh, supporting the India chapter um, in uh, coordinating and organizing several regional meetings for the World Toilet Day in Pune and along with uh, the Indian Waterworks Association in Goa. So over to you, Francie. Is it? Is it? Ah, yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. So I have the pleasure to uh, present progress and updates on the Susanna India chapter on behalf of the um, regional Susanna India chapter coordinator, Nitya Jacob. So it will be one more round of uh, PowerPoint karaoke. <laughs> um, the presentation will be uh, rather chronological because the India chapter just started 
in um, moving into its second phase from the first phase. So we'll be present the progress and activities of the first phase from uh, 16 to 18, and then activities for the second phase and the strategy also. So Susanna India chapter was the first regional chapter that was launched in June 2016. Um, it was launched in collaboration with the India Sanitation Coalition uh, with the help and funding from Argyam. The launch of the chapter was very closely connected to the momentum around sustainable sanitation in India and the civil and political attention that it got due to the Swachh Bharat mission the Clean India campaign, which aims at o end openification in India by October 2019. Um, the main activity of the India chapter are the thematic online discussion, because among the Indian member, which is the, the largest national member base we have within the Global Susanna Network, there was a big demand of, of for um, exchange and discussions around uh, all the topics that came up with uh, this sanitation. So the thematic online discussion, they take place in the Susanna Forum. They're always time bound, so two to four weeks. They're expat led, so there is usually an overarching question. And then this bigger question is subdivided into two or up to five specific questions that can be then discussed. Um, Nitya, the chapter coordinator, then combines all the discussion um, into one synthesis report, which is, um, can be fi found in the, in the Susanna Library. Some of the thematic discussions are even further developed into white papers. Um, the latest one being the septage management in urban India, providing conceptual clarity. Um, this paper um, firstly um, discusses terminology around septage, uh, urban septage management, like um, differentiating, clarifying um, fecal sludge versus septage management and addressing questions, uh, for example, what are, are the existing septic tanks in India even really septic tanks, or what is the real cost of septic management versus sewer sanitation. Um, the hard copy will also be available at the Susanna booth next week. It spent some days at customs, that's why I don't have it today with me, I'm sorry. Um, on addition to the thematic discussions, the chapter also initiated linkages with Hindi Water Portal. Um, this collaboration was initiated because Hindi Water Portal brings really grassroots stories from um, in local languages from India, with, from regions which have really challenges implementing uh, sanitation for all. So the chapter translated these um, grassroots stories to English and published them monthly in the forum. And thirdly, um, of course, the regional events were highly appreciated by the members to network and exchange uh, in person. This um, took place in Chennai with the Susanna meeting, but also like only regional Susanna India chapter meetings in Pune and Goa. So um, activities of the second phase, which is right now going from this year, 2000, uh, June, this year to 2019. Um, the initially, the, the funding proposal was for two years, so there is definitely the, the wish to, to continue after 2019, but right now, funding is secured for 2019. That's why it's only until next year. Um, the support comes from Water for People, and the, the activities and outputs will, will mostly consolidate and expand um, activities of the first phase. So we will definitely continue with the thematic online discussions because um, the demand for this was, was quite high. So the views of the different discussions were above 1,000 or 2,000 readers. But one challenge still remains the, um, to mobilize people to also engage in the discussions. So when you have a readership of 2,000 views, but only 20 uh, responses, there is still 
um, space for increased uh, engagement there. Um, then all the synthesis reports of the TDSs will uh, be consolidated into one flagship publication in early uh, or summer next year. And the focus will be around um, open defecation free plus, like ODF plus or even ODF plus plus. Um, it will further continue with integrated content, the stories from Hindi Water Portal, which are translated and published in the forum. Um, private sector engagement through collabor collaboration with India Sanitation Coalition um, will try to bring out good practices of corporate engagement with it, within sanitation. And yeah, like the other regional chapters, it's the focus is also on expanding the Susanna Library with um, relevant regional documents. And last but not least, of course, the regional uh, meetings um, will take place also in the second phase of the chapter. Um, coming to the strategy of the chapter for the second phase, um, the chapter tries to have a greater government connect, uh, government connect through um, India Sanitation Coalition and other members. Um, it would also continue and strengthen to tie up with strategic partners to enhance participations, like I mentioned, with the um, online participation, but also in, in, in general. And for that, for example, the steering committee has changed. So there's also now um, Doordashan, which is a national broadcaster in India, part of the steering committee, as well as um, Dahlberg. Um, the chapter will also tie up between the so-called insight series of um, India Sanitation Coalition and the thematic online discussions for synergy. So one could take place before the other and then one could also inform the other discussions. Um, the thematic discussion, um, thematic focus of the second phase will be more on um, FSM, Integrated Wastewater Management, and the topics of ODF plus and ODF plus plus. So next week there will be um, the next online discussion starting on clarifying the concept of ODF plus and ODF plus plus and even the concept of ODF sustainability. So clarifying the different um, but still converging definitions of um, ministries and, and also what forum members understand under this uh, terminologies. And of course, um, the, the chapter tries also to increase the use of social media for dissemination, use uh, uh, social media more to, to reach out to people's smartphones for more, um, yeah, mm, using the, their smartphones more often than their computers. Okay, and by concluding, I would like you to ask a favor. Take out your calendars or, or notepads and note down the date of 18th to 20th November, which is World Toilet Day this year. And the World Toilet Summit uh, 2018 with the theme When Nature Calls will be happening in Mumbai. And it's co-convened by year-long Susanna Partners, um, Equisense Service Foundation and World Toilet Organization. And there will be also an India, Susanna India chapter meeting on 18th of November. And they would be really happy to see some of you there. Thank you. Um, okay, we're running a bit late, so I can take one burning question. <laughs> I just missed, maybe I just missed it, but how do you decide on the, thema on the themes of the online discussions? Is that a participatory process or is that, how does that work on deciding what topic to take up in the, online, in the discussions? Yeah, um, that's partly among discussion in the, in the India chapter steering committee, which is um, the India Sanitation Coalition, as I, as I just explained, Dordasha and Dahlberg. Um, the regional chapter coordination, GIZ, and then they see if there's any, any burning issue there. But of course, it also comes from, from members who, who ask questions in, in the forum. Um, so if, yeah. 
but it's in the end it's the regional chapter coordinator who has the final voice <laughs> on which discussion he would like to start and where he has the experts at hand yeah. okay, thank you Francie thank you. Um, next we will have uh, the regional chapter coordinator okay. from Latin yeah. America uh, Lourdes Valenzuela uh, who's the chair of the board of Agatuya Foundation and um, she's an architect by background and has been working in water and sanitation for more than 15 years um, and her specialization includes uh, several technical aspects, gender, and institutional aspects. So over to you. Um, hello. Uh, good uh, afternoon, everyone. <laughs> 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 so you can see me now. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about uh, the Latin American chapter of Susana and the, the importance in the region. Uh, in Latin America, 70% of the wastewater uh, returns to, into the uh, bodies of water without any type of treatment. Uh, Latin America is one of the fastest uh, urbanizing regions in the world. And we also have uh, near to 880 million people living in informal settlement without access to uh, basic services. Uh, so, the purpose of the Latin American chapter of Susana is to promote regional knowledge production and exchange on sanitation issues so that best practices are adopted and everyone has access to sustainable services. Um, so, how can we achieve this? We are proposing three lines of work. Uh, one is to foster knowledge-based alliances and network in the region. Uh, two, to promote best practices. And three, to develop consensus and a standardization of sanitation-related process at the regional level. Susana already has 13 partners and 375 members in Latin America. So we are not starting from scratch and we will build the chapter on the existing network. Susana Latin America is a regional chapter of Susana that will operate as a project stirred by an advisory board possibly comprised of Aguatuya, SEI, Borda, CAUST, among other organizations that could voluntarily uh, participate. Uh, Aguatuya has offered to coordinate the project as long as the other supporting uh, organizations agree. So in the main plan activities, there are of course a translation of key sanitation documents to Spanish, a production of position papers on FSM, a call for Susana regional case studies, call for regional in-country ambassador or focal focus points or maybe sponsors and organization of two webinars per year, two TDS per year and two face-to-face -face meeting at regional conferences. The total cost for two-year projects near to 119 euros and uh, thanks to a contribution from Swedish Embassy in Bolivia, we have funding uh, to cover one-third of the operational cost uh, for the first two years, but we are looking to fund the remaining two-thirds of the cost. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you, Lourdes, for a very short presentation. <laughs> Um, so we can take uh, one question now. Uh, does anybody have questions for? Um, well, it isn't actually specifically to Lourdes, it's to all three presenters so far. Um, you're the first one to say this is a two-year project. My question was, what's, what's the end game here? What's the long-term vision? Are these chapters, whether they're regional or national, being established with the idea of this being you know, a long-term endeavor. Uh, and I'm, I'm asking this, 
you know, at the risk of sounding sort of prematurely, prematurely old and cynical, um, I've seen a lot of regional knowledge networks come and go, <laughs> you know, um, just in, in my sort of whatever, almost 20 years that I've been around. Um, I'm not saying that's bad, maybe that's just life, you know, an organization is there and has some funding, so set something up for some regional networking, funding stops and so the network goes again. Or are we trying, should we be looking at some more sustainable models? Uh, and India is an, is an interesting case here because in India now, there, are, there is a lot of money in India. Um, knowledge networks shouldn't depend on an international network wanting to set up a chapter. Um, and so I'm actually, I'm actually quite interested to hear from some of the other India partners how they see this sort of new chapter vis-a-vis uh, -vis what's already existing. Um, so I'm just, I'm not, I'm not trying to be cynical. I'm just really interested to hear some views from the, from Susanna itself and, and some of the core group members about what is the, what's the, what's the, what's the vision for this? Is there a, an idea of sustainability? Is it just seen as a project for a few years and then it just disbands? Uh, we we started a small discussion on this uh, this morning, but I'd just be really interested to hear some vision. Thank you for your question. I will give the chance to Arno to make a short comment, but we still have a short a presentation from Ada on the activities in country activities in Ghana, and then we can follow up on this at uh, the discussion after Ada's presentation. Just a short comment, Arno. Okay, a fundamental question with no answer. Uh, this is the request since years to go to the regions. We were feeling unable to do so uh, without confirmed funding. And a compromise that we had in the beginning was saying that, okay, if there's something that strengthens the portal, that strengthens the discussion, that strengthens the library, then despite it being only maybe for two years, then after, if it kickstarts something in the region, maybe it goes on forever. But that's not what we could commit to as, uh, as sort of the, um, as the, the base, from the base funding. So we try to have a compromise that a uh, chapter is seen as a cooperation system with an end, hoping that it will kickstart discussions in the regions which have no end. And as well in the beginning I mentioned that the governance is an issue which we are revisiting, and that's as well one of the key questions that we're posing. And you're very much welcome to help us there or to be synergistic and all these things. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Arno. Yeah, thank you everyone. So lastly, we have two amazing West African women who are here to present the in-country activities taking place in Ghana uh, with respect to knowledge management, uh, Ada and Saram. Uh, Ada Oko-Williams leads the Global Rural Sanitation Program at WaterAid. Um, as the senior wash manager, and she's also the working group co-lead for a working group two, which is market development. And Sarah Masima is a program officer at WaterAid Ghana, where she co-leads the WASH Healthcare Facilities Project, and she's currently coordinating the Susana in-country activities under the BMGF SEI cooperation system. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. It's a long day. Come on. Yeah, it's a long day, and um, yes, power puff girls. <laughs> so, um, very interestingly, and I'm, I mean, Seram is going to do the presentation, basically. She's the one on ground. But I'd just like to give a kind of background, very short one, to say what we're presenting this evening is kind of like um, our own ideas and the initiative we're um, leading on within the consortium, the B, uh, SEI, Bila Milida Gates, led consortium of members of Susanna, um, just what we're bringing in. And this really, this initiative is to address some of the questions that some of you have asked here. The first one, the question that Kitch asked, where is government? So we ask ourselves that same question, where is government within Susanna? We recognize, and from the, um, the studies that I think was a Shabana who presented earlier on, there are gaps in terms of how Susanna is reaching you know, practitioners on ground, and this is supposed to be responding to that gap on one hand. So, Kitch, probably you like get to see how we're reaching out to government, and particularly within the, the consumer um, survey that defines the various personas, and the recognition that uh, there's a critical persona, which is around the 
um, I think mid-level managers at government or at agency levels facilitating sanitation and not and needing to really be rich with the resources within Susanna. So we're targeting that group. This project is responding to it. And secondly, the question that um, Caroline just asked, if this is going to be a two-year thing, one-year thing, or based on project. So we're trialing this with government in Ghana to really think about it sustainably, where this becomes an embedded process within government, government leadership, coordinating everyone else under the global support that Susanna offers, and then conversations on knowledge, management, um, and making resources available to practitioners to then be able to use to improve our work and achieve SDG 6. So really the premise of our you know, initiative and I'll let Seram go on with the details of it. Thank you. Okay, hello everyone. Ada just summarized everything that's in the presentation, but I will still... <laughs> 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 okay, so everyone seated here knows that um, the role of Susanna as a network or what Susanna aims to do as a network. We want to connect various stakeholders and provide a space for them to engage and, and all towards attaining SDG 6. Now we are also all aware that achieving SDG 6 is about the Global South achieving it. When the Global South achieves SDG 6, the whole world achieves it. But then in reality, there's limited engagement when it, in Susanna, that is when from the on-ground stakeholders, those on the ground in the global south, and this time we are talking about Ghana, we do not have the duty bearers involved in Susanna as a platform. So they are working to attain SDG 6, but they are not involved in Susanna. And I just talked about this, the analysis showing that there's a preference for the face-to-face -face engagement. Now, as part of the SEI and Bill and Melinda Gates cooperation system, we got some funding to do some work in Ghana, which is what we are doing. So it started last year when we established the relationship with the government of Ghana. And Ghana was selected because a new ministry was formed solely dedicated to sanitation. And the gov what the government said was that the want to focus on transforming the sanitation development agenda and mobilize towards achieving sanitation and water for all. So that gave us, we saw a government that's ready to just really focus on sanitation. So we took advantage of that and came down to Ghana. Now, there's a lot going on in Ghana when it comes to sanitation. There's activity, there's people desiring to know more and to engage in learn from others so that we do not reinvent the wheel because we know that the problems we are facing in Ghana are not so different from the problems being faced in other countries in the global south. Um, global south. So now we want to embed active engagement with Susanna so that the culture of knowledge sharing is not, it's become something that is second nature to the duty bearers, the government workers, the middle managers who are working on sanitation we, it, we don't want it to be a project that starts and ends, but something that's now part of how they work so that with or without funding, they are always ready to, willing to learn from others and ready to share from their own what's going on there. And we are hoping that through this would, would come up with a model that is sustainable so that it, with or without funding, as I said, is sustainable so that when this um, project ends, it's still there, it's still working. So we know there's a lot to do and others have found a solution somewhere. And we do not want to sit in our corner trying to reinvent the wheel. What we are looking to do is we want, um, in Ghana, we want to identify the challenges to achieving the SDG 6. When these challenges are identified, we have uh, someone who we can find as a, a focal person who would share this with the working groups on Susanna so that members on the platform can engage and share their own learnings and resources. This is then fed back to the workshops in Ghana where the global learnings, we share it with them and we can then pick the ones that are specific to us in Ghana. 
and discuss to see how we can adapt it to our place and use to solve our problems. After this is done, we can then have a, a brief developed and action points shared back with the wider membership of Susanna. That is what we are looking to do and this is the model that we, we, we hope what I said, this is how it looks like as a model. So we have Susanna at the top there, Water Aid for now is acting as the facilitator of the project. So we help to get the various networks in Ghana and the ministries to engage and deliberate and discuss their challenges. And then we can now go back to Susanna, get engagement from the global level, and then feed it back to us in Ghana. There's a potential for forming regional chapters as we've had in India and Wana. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And we, we, we hope that this would continue beyond the life of the project. I'm repeating that sustainability is very important. Now we, as part of the project, just about three weeks ago, had a workshop in Wa, Upper West Region of Ghana, where prior to that, we, I shared some challenges that I had picked up from a workshop from workers in sanitation, workers in the government, um, in the district assembly. So I shared it on the platform and I got a number of responses. So then we had a workshop and there were 19 people present at this workshop. And out of those 19 people, only three of them were registered members of Susanna. Out of those three, I was one of them. So <laughs> effectively, only two, two people were registered on Susanna. For most of them, this was the first time they were hearing about it, but they were very interested in knowing more about how Susanna works, about how they could benefit from Susanna as a network. Now, at the end of this meeting, there was this interest in solving the problem that we had people, they resolved at the meeting to come up with a, a sanitation plan for the city of Wa, and they were so convinced that they were going to become the next, the cleanest model city in Ghana. And because they are going to learn from a wider platform, the Susanna platform, and apply it to their context and solve the problem of sanitation in Wa. I would like to say Wa as a city with over 126,000 people does not have um, a treatment plant, uh, fecal sludge management, in place. I mean, the fecal slag is collected and dumped in an open area untreated. So for such a city aiming to become the model city, we know we have a lot of work at hand and we hope Susanna would contribute to achieving that. So this is the end of the presentation. Ada and I are here to answer the questions. So, um, thank you, Ada and Sarah. Uh, we can take questions now for Ghana. Oh, there are so many questions. Okay, Kitch first. <laughs> As I have the microphone, I use this power. <laughs> thank you very much. I enjoyed your presentation. Um, during your presentation, I heard you say something about um, collaboration and probably a regional chapter being formed. And um, since you're talking about knowledge management, seeing that you have neighboring countries that share similar context with you, is there plans to share knowledge from what you're doing now in other countries? Are you thinking to invite neighboring countries to maybe your workshops, for instance, so that this would form a basis for what you're doing moving forward? I know there is water aid in Nigeria, and I know that um, they are doing a lot. And um, there are other organizations in Nigeria as well. And we're all looking at collaboration. Um, we've been talking about not competing, but working together for a common goal. So what, what plans do you have around sharing knowledge, basically? Because I know Susanna is about sharing knowledge and you know now we're talking about knowledge management. I would like to you know, know what you're doing, not just in Ghana, but what your plans are for, 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 yeah, for the... Shall we collect another two questions? Yes. Thank you for the presentation. Mine's not Ghana specific, but your presentation um, made me think 
as did the piece of paper going round. I've been coming to Susanna meetings, as I said earlier, for about five years, and I get the very informative emails and information from you. I've participated in a webinar or two, but I don't know if I'm a registered member or not. I don't know what that, I don't, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, am I a registered member? It's a question. And, and is that important that I'm, I'm a registered member, I'm not a registered member, and are you counting? 10, so it's more for, obviously, the Susanna um, uh, management. Um, what's a registered member and what's not a registered member, and how important is it? What's the difference? Thank you, Martin. I will collect another one from Kitch, and then we make a second round afterwards. Mine is a quick comment. I see an, a potential to involve governments in Africa uh, by the Susana Network collaborating with AMCAO, because already we have a system uh, from 2008 when Africa Sun started. There's a system of knowledge sharing among government people. With some, with the people who are here, are people who have been involved, they know, they already know. With the involvement of um, non-state actors, but so I, I see that potential. We, we can work together and uh, build the Africa network, and then the the individual countries can then use the model in Ghana to strengthen in-country knowledge sharing systems. Thank you, Kitch. So, uh, Ada and Seram, can you answer the questions? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for the question and Bulwatito, I, will, uh, I will answer that one about um, the regional initiative or ideas and I think Kitch has also answered it to some degree. So this is really not about building new systems but where they exist already, how do we strengthen it? So it's good that Kitch is saying um, AMCAO has something like that and we may want to consider and maybe see together with AMCAO to say how do we as Susanna, I work more yeah. closely with AMCA, and I think that conversation has already started with a meeting in Gabon with um, Simon, myself, and um, Arno there. So it's something that we can definitely take on board, and that can bring in the other countries within the region. But what we try to present today is really like at country levels. How is this really getting, I mean, the, glo the knowledge that exists up here, there's so much, so many things have been tried and you know, done in several countries, but because there are no mechanisms of this interaction between countries, people go on repeating them over and over. We're thinking that within the countries, they can benefit from access directly to the global platform. And it's not a two-way thing. The last slide she presented is like, you know, two blocks. So it, the conversation should be going up and down, side by side. So we should also be having some interesting things that are happening in country being fed up to the global you know, um, platform. And also others that are not directly linked to the countries can also learn from them. And I think Susanna is most positioned to do that. So we have, for example, Ghana, one of the reasons we chose Ghana, they already started thinking about organizing knowledge, I mean, um, themselves around knowledge management, formed something called TASOS, led by academics, which surprisingly, um, the, there's a, 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 um, a business, what do they call them again? The ESPA, Environmental Services Providers Association, like the truck owners that do the pit emptying, supporting knowledge management in sanitation. We thought that was really brilliant, but we're not hearing about it. So ensuring that those kind of initiatives from the ground is also being fed to the global level, being subjected to you know, analysis and interrogation and shape, um, helping them to shape the thinking and the conversations around that, that then inf affects and influence what they do at country level. So basically, this whole idea is a model that we're hoping to work on where country interactions can happen independent of the, I'm not, not necessarily setting up new structure, 
but where we can work with existing ones. And then in country also, just to reinforce that the workshops that are hold, holding now are not separate independent workshops that we're convening and saying Susanna is convening a new workshop that will require funding to keep going. But these are workshops that are already set by government and they happen anyway. The RICS meeting she was talking about, that happens periodically at the district level. We're only saying, now, can you consider knowledge management within? Can you see what are the issues do you have? How do we take it to the global north? or the global platform, get in, input and insights, bring it back in, and then create that flow with the working groups and everyone else in the room. Yeah. But yeah, I can talk to you about Nigeria later. Um, yeah. Just the one to about membership, I mm -hmm. think maybe... Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I can take that. Yeah, yeah. yeah just to answer yeah. Martin's question. Um, yeah, why do we have registered members? Uh, all content on Susanna is uh, free to share, distribute, and read. Um, I can just answer this question in one word and say EU data protection law. So I cannot, I, um, I cannot collect someone's uh, details and send them information without getting them to sign. And for a huge network like Susanna, it's often important to uh, have maintained an online database so that you can constantly be in touch with all these members. And um, what we are doing with registered members, we send them working group mails, we keep them updated on Susana News, and uh, they can also contribute in the website directly by uploading their uh, partner organization's works in the website, and they can also contribute in this huge discussion forum where we have 10,000 members uh, talking about sanitation every day. And uh, this will also help us monitor uh, and evaluate the impact on ground. Um, and that's, that's the difference between a member and a non-member. <laughs> Thank you. I don't yeah. know if you are... I don't know if, Martin, I don't know if you're a member, but I'm sure WSP used to be a Susanna partner, so we have yeah. to review that. Uh, we had three hands before I closed the first batch. I think it was Antoinette, Lara, and the colleague here. And then if we have time, then we make a second round, a third round with Arno and Roland. Uh, Arno's question was like from, for Lara, for, for the previous okay. uh, thing as well. Well, you get the chance then. Already All right, yeah. perfect. Then the second, Lara. Um, so basically, there are two things I'd like to com comment and basically answer a couple of questions that were done. So if the first one is about having the regional chapters be pro projects, programs, sustainable initiatives or not. One of the major issues we've talked about with Arne when we went to Ashbourne last, week, last month was the idea of having that be a sustainable issue. But for us to be thinking about this sustainably, we have to make sure that we identify the actual need for the region and be able to answer that. Because right now, when you do talk about member organizations and you're looking at the numbers and if, if you just ask the question, am I a member, am I not a member, do I have to be a partner, do I not, and etc. I think we have to focus on one thing. I used to work with IUCN and IUCN is a membership organization. In the regional office, we used to think about numbers more than quality. And I think this is something we have to think about. It doesn't really matter how many members I have in the region. The, the tiny little map I, might, I showed for the region might be empty, but I can assure you that there are so many people working on this and so many people working with us as Susanna, so many people working with core group members. So I don't think we have to concentrate on how many people or how many partners we have, but the actual quality they produce. And this is the actual need of having regional chapters because people might not want to register as a partner, but this is where Manal and I come in, where we provide the actual sustainability of a network like this. The region has provided many networks and I assure you none of them worked. Why? Because they belonged to one organization. One thing that we sell to people in our region is that Susanna does not belong to one person. It doesn't belong to Burda, it doesn't belong to GTO, it doesn't belong to anyone. So it's not one organization's logo, it's well, Susanna. All right, so you are registered next, so you, I'll give you the microphone to, so you have the chance to make your question. Yeah, no, I, I just want to give it back to her. You're still 
your funding is still linked to Susanna right now and temporary. So how can we get to a, you know, a time, an era where your chapter will exist because your chapter is funded in the region by the region and owned by the region and not linked to Susanna or the council or anybody? And now, and now the whole idea is making sure that other organizations in the region identify the need to have people to do this. So I am sure if Burda did think about this, and I, I look at Stefan and I think about this, if they sat there at the core group meeting thinking, ah, there is a need, I am sure when we do provide knowledge, not only share, but create knowledge from the region for the region, other local organizations will see that need. I, at least I'm hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll give the microphone first to Arno and then to Roland. Thanks a lot. Yeah, a little question to, to Lara. Um, I know you work through Jordan. And, you know, I, over the, I don't know, year or so that's gone by we, through the development of the Mena Now Wana chapter, I've always been looking for a regional water resources platform for that region from Morocco to Afghanistan. I, I can't find one. There's all sorts of people that are doing things like that, but they're, they're not in the region. <clears throat> That's one. <clears throat> the other one is, I believe, it's probably the water crisis region of the world. So um, it's very important that we link sanitation to the lack of water. These, these cities and r rural areas that have really a very dark future. There's really, we need sustainable sanitation. Or the whole place is going to have to go for desalination. But it's linked to energy. And so what I'm saying is, is that you need to piggyback on, on water and that whole crisis. And also energy, because you have solar power, you have, I mean, you have traditional oil and gas. It's actually a powerhouse for potential change. So what I would just suggest is, a communication strategy. It doesn't have to be big numbers, and I think IUCN can tell you how to do that even. And it's national governments, it's national organizations, and it, I think it'll grow, but uh, you know, stepwise. I wouldn't be so skeptical about saying money, there, there is lots of money. I mean, OPEC would just sort of throw a few crumbs in that direction just, just to keep people alive. Thank you, Arno. Roland. Yeah, I, I quickly would like to come back to the discussion just before. Uh, as you know, we are in the middle of a discussion about the structure and the governance of Susanna as a whole. And the regional chapter is an important issue there. So what I would like to know from you a little bit more, how you see now from the regional point of view, how you see the link to the Susanna Global how can Susanna Global help you to perform your, to do your job? How you see this link and what do you expect and what do you expect in governance from Susanna? Uh, to, I would like to hear a bit more about you because we are in the middle of the discussion about that. And uh, before we heard a little bit from top down how it was done, and now I would like to hear a bit from bottom up how you see it. Now you, you did some work, you know a little bit what you need and how you see this, this link. Thank you. Um, okay, to begin with, let me just make sure that everybody understands that we've been only functioning for two and a half months. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, what we know is either from our previous work experience and um, answering your question or comment, I think this is why Manal and I were hired. I'm not a wash person and I'm not a sanitation person. I'm more, uh, my background is environmental science. Uh, my whole experience is in water management and governance. And I think seeing the link between that and sustainable sanitation is the key for our region. And I was discussing this yesterday uh, with, I think, with Stefan, the, the whole idea is that donors and or other organizations, when they see the word sanitation, they run away because they think, oh, this is not mine. This is not my thing. Uh, it's just wastewater. It's just, if we highlight the whole connection between energy, 
water, sanitation, climate change, and the whole ideas behind that, I think we can be more sustainable in the future. If we want to go back to your question and what we actually need as a chapter, I think this all boils down to what we're going to be doing for the next six months. Part of us being able to create a policy, science, and society platform is actually bringing people together on the table from the region to discuss what we need. Because I think everybody knows what they need, but we're, nobody actually jotted it down. And I think most of the needs have been portrayed to us from the global north. And this is something we have to change. A part of us doing this is us being able to make sure that the Secretary General of the Ministry of Education, for example, is here. And I think that, uh, that GIZ is doing a great job in making sure that different stakeholders work together in our region, especially with different ministries and different networks. And I think this is part of our job to make sure that we portray our needs correctly. And I think this is something we're going to have to do within the next three to four months. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> well, I'm thinking in order to be um, sustainable, we will to work with exi existing association in the country as uh, uh, engineers associations or uh, with the um, uh, academics. So uh, then in the future, we, we have to be sustainable in, in the same region, no? in the region itself, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, we can take one more question. Yeah. Sorry, who was in the pipeline? Sorry, it's very last comment, so we can move on and we can continue discussing over dinner for sure. Yeah, but I just want to add a comment for the extent of the WANA chapter from Morocco to Jordan or uh, all of these countries. That's why we, when we decide to um, where we have to start, where is the potential, where is we have uh, connection, networking. So we see that we need a regional round table to decide which countries we can start. Um, um, maybe we can start from Jordan, then there is a potential to work from Egypt, but for sure we will work step by step. We will not dream that so big. We have to walk slowly to, to reach to our goals. That's uh, for our next question. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, last comment or question from Stefan. On the financial sustainability, which was just asked here, and adding to um, what our regional chapter just said, I think there is a fundamental difference between the first water decade between 1980 to 1990 and the second world water decade between 2000 and 2015. Kitsch and Colleen, can we join the same conversation here? So there are fundamental differences between earlier efforts to fund regional knowledge hubs and the situation post-2015 because we have now major investments into the sector which were not happening in that way in, in the previous decades. So it's to me also part of the um, risk management and quality assurance um, part of larger infrastructure investments that through this Susanna network there may be this risk management and knowledge assuring, quality assuring part. So if there is a platform in the region, okay, this is the closing down message, time over. So, so, so this part is really different from before 2015. We have had earlier efforts and earlier centers, but they were not sustainable because there was no infrastructure development there. So that's the point. Thank you. Okay, um, thank you all for the heated discussion. I think we can definitely continue after the last session. So now I call upon Arne to uh, proceed to the last uh, concluding session.